Hello guys and welcome to a new Stir Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. Today I'm joined once again by Attack Power Gaming. Good morning, good evening and good day everyone. Super excited to be back. In this one we're going to be having a look at game two of a best of three between Fanti and Gonzo in season seven of the Steel Division 2 League. Today they're going to be playing on Shadilza. And on our left, in the red team, playing on the allied side, we have Gonzo using the 358th rifles and the balanced deployment type. And on our right, in the blue team, playing on the Axis side, we have Fanti using the Gebirgsjäger and the Maverick deployment type. We can already see here Fanti is declaring... I, honestly, I understand. He's saying I'm scared after what it, what he did to me last game. <laughs> I can, it's a bit violated. I can understand that. <laughs> So what do you think about these decks? Um, 358 has kind of seen a resurgence recently in the 1v1 community. Um, I, I don't remember ever playing against this deck a, a, a few months ago, and all of a sudden now this thing's like the bee's knees of, of Soviet divisions. It got a little bit of a buff in that, you know, love patch that they did. And, I mean, it does pretty well now. I, it's, I'm not a fan of it personally, but I'm mostly an Axis player, so I'm not the guy to Axe. The fifth could be Xeager. This is not my division of choice. I'll be honest with you. It functions very similarly to the 28th Jaeger. It's got the special infantry called Gebirg's Jaegers that are, are kind of like hybrid, good at both close and long range. Um, it, it, what makes it so strong is that it just has a lot of great support weapons. Everything's really aggressively costed. Um, so you get a great combination of, of firepower from that division. It's from the new Italian DLC. So it is it is very strong. Yeah, the nice thing about it, it's got really like decent value for money infantry, except from obviously in the latest patch when they got nerfed. Um, but I believe they were probably playing on the patch because this is on the special viewer. So this would have been, I think, before that nerf potentially. I will, we will see when we're able to check out the information on the cards. Um, but yeah, on the 358, he does have like the Gripper Sachiski for like the really strong close range. It's a, it's a very nice division, and it does have uh, the bombers the big bombers the uh year threes are they oh yeah yeah yep yeah so in 1v1 those can get quite a lot of work done because they have well there's never really that much aa um but let's have a look at what's going down here so for the top side for gonzo he's got the maxims and the uh infantry gun also has this two up there uh further down he's got Two more infantry guns with the PTRS squads. There's going to be a Stoke Comrati, a couple of Sapodi, and the Gripper Sajiski with a couple of T26s at the start, which is going to take a little while to get to the front line. Yeah, they'll get uh, there. There's going to be further down, uh, another infantry gun, PTRS, a couple of Stoke DP, and on the bottom side, it's going to be two PTRS, Stoke Comrati, two Sapodi, Gripper Sajiski, Stoke DP, and another two T26s. So a bit of a concentration towards the uh, north and top south here. mid and on the very yeah, at the very bottom yeah on the right side for fanti he's got a couple of gebirgs jaeger with the lg42 and the gebirg swift um he's got the lg42 uh, the mg42 there's going to be one of the stug m42s uh, which are really nice they have that decent rate of fire the mg42 couple gebirg jaeger further down two gebirg stone pioneers with gebirg swift and the ab41 and the lg42 and then on the very bottom side, another large concentration of units from Fanti. Going to be a couple of Kebergs, Jaeger, and the Sturm Pioneer, AB41, and also an IG in there with the Kebergs Fusilier. Yeah, I, I will say I do feel like uh, the the fifth the Kebergs Jaeger is an odd choice for this map. There's a lot of open ground. Um, there's a few places where you get kind of close range concentrated. But not as much as I would think where I would say, oh, this is the division for this map. I think in this matchup it works relatively well because of the uh, LGs, IGs, and also the Stugs. Uh, especially like the Stug M42 there has the 12 round per minute rate of fire with the 1.52 damage on the HU shell. So those things absolutely rip infantry at range. Same with the MG42s. So if there's not too much like decent long range armor, uh, then you can get a lot of work done. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a definitely a good argument. This is post patch, by the way. These Gabriel's Jaegers are twenty five points. Ah, okay. So still valuing this uh, division, 
even after it's nerfed, which is interesting. Yeah, it, it is still really strong. Like, if you look at the stats for the Kabir Jaeger, they have four MP40s, five G43s, an MG42, and, and an AT grenade. That is really strong with a 10-man squad. They also get Raider, which does help their stealth, too. So, you know, they're really good squads. For me, I actually just made a video about playing this division. I don't like these kind of infantry squads because I don't think they do anything really well. You know, they die to other close-range combat infantry. They lose to other long-range combat infantry. You know, they just don't do either really strong. But that's just me really liking things to do what they're designed to do. <laughs> so I think the benefit of them is that they are relatively cheap. <laughs> Obviously more expensive now than they were before. Yeah. And also their availability curve. Yeah, the availability them curve. them in yeah. at one vet, which means that when you commander and leader them, you can get them up to three vet very easily. Um, and that is a, a great benefit, and that's what makes them super strong. Um, the IL-2 M3 did get a nice bombing strike onto the LG. Uh, it may go down here. Side. It may go down to this this C205. Uh, oh, he changed targets. I'm not sure I agree with that. I think it's because of the yak. He didn't want to overcommit to the IL-2. Uh, he would have caught that. That's unfortunate. A lot of air power here early. I think this was at least, what, three fighters here in total along with a bomber? Yep. So the Veltro is 100 points pop. Good, decent at strafing though with the double 20 mil. Uh, can definitely help pin down things for these infantry engagements. But yeah, taking out the LG on the top side is really nice because you're very limited in number on those LGs early on in the game. If you decide to bring them in, in phase A, I think you only get three on a card. And they are they are very, very strong. Yeah, 2,000 meter range with the uh, 4.1 damage. Yeah, they're, they're very a nice. very strong piece. And they do have the heat shells if, if people get too close. So we're at a nice 12-12 here, though. I mean, this is Fanti's, this is where Fanti needs to be, and he needs to stay. Oh, not uh, Fanti, sorry, Gonzo. Gonzo, needs to be. Gonzo. Yeah. my bad, my bad. We're once again in that situation where Fanti is playing the Maverick up against Gonzo's balanced, and he's not getting a lead early on. Well, I, I would say that in the previous game, Fanti did actually have a relatively good he start had a 15, positioning he, wise. Yeah, he had a 15-9 early. Yeah, he did have a 15-9, um, but it certainly got broken down relatively quickly and methodically by Gonzo. Yeah, I think, and I, I think, un unfortunately for Fanti, he ended up on the less, the less favorable side for Maverick. Um, if you're on the red side, you have these two flags in the middle here on the hill and in this swamp area that are on that are, that are relatively easy to grab. You know, you just kind of put an infantry squad on the edge of this hill and they're pretty safe. Um, and you kind of like push some small unit that has high stealth in the middle and you can kind of really easy, easily capture those two flags. Um, but unfortunately he ended up on the other side and there's not as easy of flags to just kind of nip. A nice couple of kills where Gonzo there managed to cake out both the sniper and the MG in the mid with the help of the T26 and double sapphire. On the bottom side, IG did take out one of the T26s though, which is going to take away some of the fire support from Gonzo as Fanti makes a little bit of play down here, bringing up the M42 as well to help from a distance. Gberg Jaeger are going to be pushing into the PTRS now. And with the sapphire already kind of pinned down from that initial engagement with the sniper and MG. He's gonna be like, yeah, do have a good chance here, but the group is a Jiski. Yeah, they're gonna do are damage. Are gonna certainly be difficult to deal with. And they're double oh, slimy. Once again, we have a little bit of a veteran C inequality here, uh, where Gonzo's guys are just have more veteran C, and that really matters. You can see how quickly they just ate through those Gabiug Jaegers. Yeah, the beauty of these group is a Jiski, uh, similar to the Finnish infantry, is they have those Swami. So. They have the 150 meter range on their SMGs, which makes them super strong. And the benefit of 150 meter range over 100 meter range is still very potent at the 100 meter range. Oh yeah. Because they have a base accuracy of 65%. It goes and up. so as the infantry get closer, yeah, the accuracy goes up and therefore they do way more damage. Like the DPS is so much stronger. Yeah, the, it, it's really important that you know if your SMGs reach out to that 150 meters. And there's very few units that it happens. It's a couple Romanian units, it's a couple Italian units, and it's, I think this is the only Soviet, one of the only Soviet units with this. Yes, indeed, yeah. But the difference is striking. It Ooh, really is. Oh, that cheeky Panzer Trek. Yeah. Playing <laughs> on the bottom side. Well, like, bottom of the mid area there. With yep, the T60 that, kill, lovely. That was fun. Smoking the road, unloading the Panzer Trek now, like that. down south, Fanti's doing a nice job of using his FPWs to support his push and keep these really strong infantry off of the tree line. Yeah, it's a little bit of a misplay from Gonzo getting his uh, 
group of Sachiski and the Sapari on the edge there. So Sapari maybe are okay for dealing with the Gabok Jigar at range because of the SVTs, but uh, not the Gripper Sachiski. They should not really be brought no. forward. Although I guess they have a couple of ABTs, so I can add they DPS, do, but, but it's like, not ideal. No, that's not where you want them. Yeah. Oh, T26 has take out the M22 on the top yep, side. Saw oh, the that M42 too. on the top side. Yep. Very nice. Uh, but this push for Fancy kind of got repelled pretty hard. I think his close range infantry got picked off by the Strauki as a, on the road with no cover. So like the heavy cover to no cover engagement is so brutal. And the Gibbix uh, Swift just not really doing a good job there. Yeah, and, and I mean, if you if you zoom out and just look already, you can already see the, the disparity between the two sides. The, the blue is just not looking as thick as the red in terms of units. If you look up north, I mean, Gonzo has so many units. Just so you many. Gonzo's looking thick, do you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Veltro's there getting a nice strafing run onto the Maxim. We got the uh, Sturm Pioneers going in for another push this time against the Gopher Sichiski. But once again, look at those uh, yeah. submachine guns just tearing these guys up. Well, the that Sturm Pioneers, nasty. they're not even in range. Uh, I mean, they are, yeah. but they're only using their Berettas. So they only have three Berettas. So the, the 150 mm Beretta is shooting, but the two MP40s are not, which is essentially cutting their firepower in half. Yep, indeed. And the like, Gebirgsjäger lost like six men to the group of Sichiski yeah. at the same time. Oh. That was really, really bad. And he just lost oh. a fighter up top there to that Yak 7B. Yeah, Yak 7 taken out. The belt try. And here comes the IL-2 for, I would assume, the Pac-40 or the LG-42, one of the two. Yeah, it looks like it's heading towards the Pac-40 right now. The Maxim pinning it down. Uh, that's really nice. Um, IG from Fanti. Has that got, it's got line of sight onto the Sapri with the LG-42. That's probably going to go down nice and quick. Uh, infantry gun is engaging the AB in the middle. So Fanti's going to have to be a little bit careful of that because these uh, light armor cars don't have too much health, and if they get hit by HE enough, they will still die. So, yeah, that's an odd. There. That's a really odd place for that. I'm also wondering why the LG. Oh, because he backed it up. He did have the uh, the 76, like up in the front of the tree line, so the LG could have sniped it, but he backed it up actually. I think Fanti's just getting a little bit overwhelmed again. Like, hey, he just yep. lost his infantry coming up in that town. Um, another transport loss for him. IL-2 went for the LG there, but missed somehow. Oh my goodness. I have no idea. <laughs> he must he must <laughs> have lost line of kill. sight. Yeah, he must have lost line of sight and just bombed anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. potentially indeed. The X7 actually manages to finish off a unit by strafing it. And now so, yeah, Fanti's lost his center. Ugly. Yep, Fanti's lost his center again. Now he's still, it's still 13 11 for Fanti, so it's not like he's out of this yet. Yeah, but as you mentioned, there's so much more on the field right now yeah. from Gonzo than there is from Fanti, and Fanti has the Maverick, so yeah, that is only going to get worse, and it's going to hit a critical mass in this game where Gonzo just sweeps through and takes so many flags very, very quickly. Well, indeed. Like you can you can see the 50-50 right now, or like the front line in general, and there's these like four flags that are blue, like in the middle. That ha there's uh, nobody all there. Very close to the front line. <laughs> there's nobody there. As soon as Gonzo pushes, he gets four flags. <laughs> That's gonna here be here. Comes gross. one. This is one right yep. here. He just picked up one. Back to the 12-12. And like you can see here, Gonzo feels so good. He's leaving his IL-2 out to like strafe. Yep, Veltro's coming in, but he's got the uh, AA on the top side to kind of maybe bait it, but the IL-2 might get shot enough. Yep. Uh, yeah, yeah, there you go, you got him. That's a uh, good kill for Fanti. have moved up in the mid, and managing to capture quite a lot of ground here for now. Well, oh, it looks like on the bottom side, Fanti's push got completely repelled. Yeah, uh, and now, and now get he's getting counter. Now fire. he's getting counter pushed. Yeah, that is a definitely a big problem that you you can have sometimes. Is if you do make a play like that and you try and push in, you've got to make sure you've almost already got reinforcements on the way, so that if it does fail, this doesn't happen to you. Yeah, I um, I I always tell people, don't you shouldn't you really should never attack with all of your troops. I mean, it yeah. feels like the right thing to do because you really want to win that area or whatever. He's about to, he lost a fighter down south to the double 25 yeah. mil. Um, but if, if you send everyone forward and things do not work out perfectly, 
then it everything's gone. Like you have nothing there anymore, and your line's just gonna melt, and your opponent's gonna see that. Like it's not like they don't know, and that's the big difference with this game versus you know SD One and and Warno and and all the other you know Eugen games. This one has a front line that makes it really obvious. I mean, I don't think even SD One the front line was so telling as it is in this game. Well, I think the the biggest thing is just like the experience of the players in in League One is that they know, right? Oh yeah, they they are keeping track of you losing units, and as soon as you lose a bunch of units, they're gonna push you hard. And yeah, that's basically what Gonzo is doing here. He's putting the pressure on as soon as he knows that they're he's killed things, right? Yeah, <laughs> he's keeping track of that. We saw um, a heavy but, bomber, but... heavy bomber up north. It's the TU at two S. That's what this division has, not the Ur. This is the TU at division. Oh, okay. Yeah, my bad. And these the, are um... these are even worse. <laughs> <laughs> the three hundred fifty eight. So with the addition of these uh, 25 mil AA pieces, has, that's that's definitely helped massively oh, with yeah. pair control in this game. This division suffered with its lack of AA, and just even even just having some of this light AA to help cover your your line makes it such a huge difference. It's crazy to see which divisions are bad simply because they can't survive air spam. Yeah, like early bombers, like picking off units of infantry can yep. make a huge difference in the game. In the center, the Kapirgsjäger, actually very heavily stressed right now. This T-16 might have a good chance to get a couple of surrenders or even just straight up kills oh, there. Yeah. As the 20 mil rips through those squads. T-60 is a nice little tank. I mean, the auto cannons in this game are so powerful. They are. Yeah, light armored cars with 20 mils are super, super strong. That's why you're seeing so many of these SPW AB41s, I mean, you're even seeing Fanti bringing a bunch of these 20 mils and keeping them relatively close to the front line because he can use them to kill infantry very quickly. But yeah. nice, nice flank on the bottom side by Gonzo with these two Grupa Sajiski getting a nice double kill there. IG going down and a bunch of infantry next to it. Yeah, that's brutal. Because now he's going to be able to cut off these. If he can get any sort of troops in here, you know, even a light AT gun to cover this road, he can basically cut Fanti off the, the south here and it's I mean he's bringing up a Shug to try to help but I don't know if that's going to solve his problems yeah the hardest part is also that the ABTs from this group of Sachiski have forced any infantry to unload early so they're yep. not going to get into that top side tree line where they need to be right now and that's allowing the the other units that Gonzo has to move up here and not have to worry about too many reinforcements so up north here, he uh, Fanti is using his LG42 really well to kind of snipe some of these support weapons. The Zis2, though, is going to get into position probably to take out this Stug3. Um, he really needs to spot this with his LG42, but he has not yet, unfortunately. And he's just doing a fire position on the spot where he knew that OB gun was. Yeah, it's, it's really bad on the... I feel like, again, Fanti is getting low on, like, infantry availability, potentially. Or in just, phase B, he like, shouldn't be. Infantry, <laughs> yeah, I know. The, the infantry disparity, again, is just so massive. Like, yes, yeah. Gonzo's playing the 358th rifles, but, like, yeah, this I, is the Gebergsjäger. They have a lot of cheap infantry, and you should be able to bring a bunch of it in. I mean, it really is just these groups should... I'm not going to say it right. Is it Chisky, right? Yeah? No? Maybe? Yep. <laughs> um, they're just absolutely not... And this is what this was my complaint with the Gebergsjäger. They're close-range infantry, but they're not. They do not match up well against infantry that are legitimately designed to fight in the woods. And that's the problem, is he's sending these Gebirgsjägers against these Zachitskis and losing. Like, definitively yeah. losing every single time, and it's just melting away his infantry force. These Zachitskis are just, like, some of the best close-range infantry in their game. Very strong. Um, like, genuinely, because they're over the 150-meter uh, range SMG plus the Flamer. It's just really, really, really good. Like, you can use the smoke, and then you don't have to worry about necessarily being on top of the enemy unit. As long as you're able to see the enemy unit, you're going to be able to do damage, and then it's just really, really bit hard to deal with. The T-34 here engaging the M42 in the center. M42 sure. does have decent rate, like, um, rate of fire, but the T-34 got the first penetration in there. Well, at this range, this the M42 is going to struggle. Yeah, yep. M42 does go down. So nice support taken care of. Yeah, he's going to 42 might get a few kills out here in the open though. He might have to, he he might swing this Stug up north a little bit, the one he has south to try to take out some of this armor cuz otherwise he's not going to be able to reestablish in the center and he doesn't have much there to start. 
He's Gebirg's Pioneer on the bottom side, just getting having such a hard time dealing with these flamethrowers. Because the flamethrowers are firing first every time. And so the jerry can bombs aren't really being used. When they are, it is chunking. This is just key quite a lot, but the Sajixi are already getting the penetration in there. I <laughs> just delete that Gebirg's yeah, Pioneer. It's uh... so gross. <laughs> it's so fast. It's so fast. It's like six, six men just deleted. And this is where, honestly, all the 358th needed was a little bit more AA, and it got it in that buff. And now, all of a sudden, this division is absolutely painful. I mean, it's good. It's a good division it's now. Just brutal, because the... The benefit of the like Gebirgs you get in this matchup is its its utilization of like medium to long range engagements with its support weapons. But somehow Gonzo is wrapping Vanti around his finger and forcing him to play into these forests, which is completely not where, where he, wants he wants to be. To be. Yeah, well, not where, not where yeah, not where Fanti wants to be. Yeah, not where Fanti wants to be whatsoever. It's and big three though. Might be able to take care of this T-34. Should be able- oh no, not if he gets in underneath him, no. Oh yeah, that's- that's a cheeky play there from Gonzo. He's just getting close enough to engage the Stug. And Maybe this... getting the Stug into a position that can, it can't fire down, but- Now the Stug like should fire first because of its one veteran C, so the Stug should win this. Alright, yeah. there it goes. Stug 3 does have a decent rate of fire. Um, base rate of fire anyway. But T-34 on the top side, getting one back against the Stug M42 and is now going to be able to clean up the AB41 as well unless the unless the Gibbs yeah. strife gets in there uh, yeah. nope <laughs> no they're just not finding Get him it. I think he's going for that AT gun so that he can no, move no. up his Stug a bit more reliably uh, with the god view it's always so hard to watch because you know that'd be you like r missing a unit completely while you're walking like a foot away from it you know what I mean yeah yeah LG42 gonna be able to take out the ZIS2 on the top side, probably. And well, no, it's changing target because it pinned it down. Stuck though, maybe finishing off. <laughs> nope, that stopped firing as well. ZIS2 oh. gonna get away with it for the time I, being. Yeah, yeah. And down south, Gonzo has, I mean, pretty definitively kind of captures. There's no way he'll ever push him out of the, the forest with all those flamers. It doesn't matter how many of these Gebirgsjägers he throws forward, it really doesn't. Yeah, we're coming up to the 20 minute mark where. Gonzo's income will be almost double that of Fanti's. And, yeah, and Fanti has not made any ground. No. Nah. No, nah, this is I mean he finally takes out that T thirty four up north with his Panzer Shrek, so that's a plus. He's got he's gonna take out a group of here. Success well he should, unless the fallback yeah. <laughs> I feel like some of these engagements are also not just falling in favor of Fanti at all. The, the, yeah. the, the, the main oh. thing Particularly with the LG, for example, is if he was watching it or paying attention, he could micro that to finish off yep. the infantry gun or the ZIS-2. So, now we... obviously he's being pressured elsewhere and doesn't have time to do that against Gonzo. Now the ISU-122 has been called in field, immediately took out that Stug in a single shot. And we can see three Gebirgsjäger here on, down south losing there to was two. Four. There was yeah, four. four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, all losing. this is on Fanti though. So what's happening? He has his infantry too oh. close together. Oh, he has his infantry too close together. So every shot of the flamer is actually suppressing all his infantry at once instead of a single unit. So he's essentially giving the group a like he's like multiplying their effectiveness. HS129 coming in for the ISU. I think the BF109 is more of a distraction than anything else. Most definitely. That, I think it's not going to get there. Gonzo, Gonzo has right clicked to this HS129 with the 25 mils oh, to make yeah. sure that it doesn't get there. So, yeah, nice job. Nice micro there to make sure that the bomber doesn't get through. And well, would you look at that? Uh, yep. Anti realizes it's time's up for the, for the Maverick. He hasn't got there in the 20 minutes. Uh, he hasn't made yes. any lead in oh, 20 and it's minutes. So. Almost, almost 2 to 1 in the KD ratio here for Gonzo. Yeah. He's not going to waste anyone's time. And yeah, 2,420 kills to 1,320 losses. Gonzo absolutely schooling Fanti in this one. Brutal. It was brutal. Yeah, that is very brutal indeed. The group of Sajiski just doing so well in the kills. Look at the look at them getting the Quebec Fusilier. Pioneer, Pioneer, oh, like yeah. Pioneer, Pioneer, Shreve, Shreve. Like, Kaberg, Shager, Kaberg, Shager, Pioneer, Kaberg, Shager. Like, four to one on these squads is, is, be is yeah. just disgusting. You can't, you can't win when, you're, when your infantry is trading three to one. 
with the opponent's infantry. You, it, it's too many points. It's too many points and lost. It's too much availability as well, because in 1v1, obviously, you're not taking as much availability as you would in like a, a 3 3 4 4 which is like, well, I'm generically playing. Well, yeah, and, 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 it, and in 1v1, it really comes down to momentum. You know, so you're really thinking, am I trade? It's all about trading well. You know, it's all yeah. about using your points effectively in the time that you have. Because basically, when it's Maverick, you have until, I believe it's 25 minutes when balance finally makes up the, the difference. You know, the difference in points that it lost. So until you get to 25 minutes as a Maverick player, you have more points deployed than your opponent. That doesn't, you can't be losing more than them. You know, you have to be able to kind of pile on the rabbit, as so to say, so to speak. Yeah, I just, I just don't think Vanti really played around his division strengths. Like, I think maybe putting more focus in the center with the LGs would have been really nice. Play across that open ground and force Gonzo to come to him, as opposed to Coming pushing into the, into the heavy cover that yep. Gonzo already has the group of Sajiski in. So, yeah, I, I feel like it was really on Vanti kind of like made it so much worse than it was in the first game. And that's why we see the kills and losses being so much more significant than in the first game as well. Yeah, and, and it does it does come down to Gonzo is an absolutely fantastic player. I mean, he doesn't yeah. make he does not make micro mistakes. Like he really doesn't. So every mistake you make, he does not, and it just continues to compound, and you start to panic more. Like I know personally from playing him. You know, you you make these little mistakes, and it's just like he's never not somewhere. Like you're never catching him off guard. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you're like, oh, I'm making this attack. He'll never know. And he's already fallen back. He's already moving. He's already changing. And he's attacking you somewhere else at the same time. It's like, I, I don't even know how he's doing that. Yeah. You're a wizard, Gonzo. He really is. He's, he's something else. Oh, so there we have it. Anything else you would like to see? No, a, a fantastic schooling and, and how, to, how to manage a battlefield. Yeah, so congratulations to Gonzo. Moves on to the final. Uh, unfortunately for Fanti, he will be knocked out of the playoffs, but he will, well, I say that he'll be moving on to the third place game. I assume. I, I um, yeah, I'm not sure, but excellent series to him. It's it's always a tough match, tough matchup playing against Gonzo. Yeah, two 0 Gonzo. Good job. Commiserations, fancy. Uh, that's it from us. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Have a fantastic day. Yeah, catch you later, guys. Goodbye. Yeah,